Now, uh, I understand there's uh, at least some rumors flying around that uh, are, are you no longer going to be flying the, the Sundancer? Correct. Correct. <clears throat> we went a long ways down the Sundancer development road. And <clears throat> what finally happened is that we began to really discover <clears throat> that we, when we compared the expense of a Sundancer spacecraft and a 330 spacecraft, both from a launch standpoint, from the spacecraft fabrication standpoint, <clears throat> there was really no comparison to the util utility benefit as a result of each of those two spacecraft. The 330 was so far and away more utilitarian than Sundancer was, it wasn't funny. So <clears throat> we decided, well, what's the sense of going to a large expense for a relatively small payload volume on the interior once you're, you are accommodating three people to house three people and you're looking at doing life sciences, some kind of microgravity work, maybe with uh, uh, metals or compounds or, or organic substances, <clears throat> but you, you're constricted with the amount of room and volume that you have even though the, the, the overall volume is huge. And then you compare that to the 330, <clears throat> it, may, it just didn't make as much sense. So we said, well, let's not, let's not do this. So we're going to have the 330 as our mainstay uh, uh, spacecraft. It's far more efficient and offers a, a much, much larger benefit to the customer. Wonderful. Now, um, uh, with the, the partnership that you have with Boeing, uh, is that an exclusive partnership? Or if another company were to have uh, human spaceflight capability sooner, would you also be willing to work with them? Or are you only exclusively working with Boeing? We don't have a partnership. Exactly. What we are is a subcontractor to Boeing. And on, on CC Dev 1, uh, we uh, fulfilled a number of uh, contractual obliga obligations in building certain things for Boeing and conducting certain kinds of tests. Uh, it looks like we'll probably be involved in them on CC Dev 2, doing the same kinds of things, behaving as a subcontractor, conducting different tests, building different things for them. Uh, so uh, we're very glad to be part of that process, but we're not exactly a, a partner per se. We, we, um, we do behave as a subcontractor and I think Boeing would agree with that. Okay. Now, uh, um, how did the idea for uh, the Olympus module come out? Um, come out? <clears throat> I wanted to <clears throat> stay practical and look at the lifting capacity of not just what, what launch vehicles we already had, but <clears throat> what might be practical launch vehicles that would be the earliest to be available in the marketplace. And so I didn't want to go too crazy <clears throat> with, uh, with uh, the masses, so I stayed within an eight meter diameter fairing and I had had conversations um, with folks at ULA and um, they said <clears throat> that uh, they could modify a Delta IV <clears throat> and they could put 70 metric tons to orbit um, and to put that in perspective the largest lifter that America has right now can maybe do 25 tons and um, <clears throat> they could do that and they could fly at least an eight meter diameter fairing. So, uh, and, they, and they said we can do that for all the engineering that's required, including the testing of several rockets to make sure we validate the engineering and the architecture for about a billion and a half dollars. Um, this has fallen on totally deaf ears from NASA because it's a small program small programs are not popular. If you have a $10 billion program or a $20 billion program, that's even better and you're going to be more popular. So it's not about saving money. So this never acquired any traction that, that ULA could do this for a billion and a half and launch essentially 140,000 pounds to LEO. So I told my guys, I'll say, okay, let's see what we can do with this volume <clears throat> and have some fun and see what kind of <clears throat> uh, a spacecraft we can generate. <clears throat> so we came up with a 2100 
cubic meter volume, which is almost double the size of the ISS by itself. So this thing could be a great hospital all on its own. You could have an operating area, emergency room, recovery area. Uh, you could have research labs on board uh, of that. So it could be a, it could be a great uh, facility.